This is the MC Reggie Fresh Morning Show. Station that pays. This is MC Reggie Fresh from the MC Reggie Fresh Morning Show. And folks, she's in the building. She was born in Lansing, Michigan. She was a former assistant attorney general. She was a former administrative law judge. And she's the CEO of Amara Products. And also a proud member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Incorporated, the sorority sister of Vice President Kamala Harris. After being laid off in 2012 without notice due to state budget cuts, she lost everything. The unexpected sudden job loss sparked her entrepreneurial journey. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, Let's welcome, let's welcome Miss Tiffany Nicole Courtright. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the MC Reggie Fresh Morning Show. What's going on, Miss Tiffany? And good morning to you. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing absolutely wonderful. Wonderful. Like I said, we've been, I've been trying to get, it's probably by almost two years. I say a year and a half, but we got you. You in the mix. <laughs> yeah. Everything happens when it's supposed to, all in divine order. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So anyway, the first question I want to ask you is, what do you think about your sorority sister just being the vice president? You know what? I've got to tell you, I am so beyond proud. I am just so thankful. I'm proud of her, and I'm just thankful for her being in a position right now to blaze the trail. And it's so much bigger than her walking in that. What's so beautiful about it is that, you know, our daughters, our granddaughters, our nieces will have someone that they can aspire to be like that looks like them. Yes, you know, often the importance of representation and it's not just a matter of, of just making history but it's about blazing that trail and leading the way for others so that they can can be inspired and know that if she can do it you can do it because god is no respecter of persons absolutely all right now now tiffany the first question i want to ask you is when you was uh you know i know you was a judge and a lawyer and that good stuff and then i noticed that you know 2012 you know, it was a layoff and stuff like that. At that moment, when everything had shut down, how did you feel and, and what was your plans? You know, actually, at that time, I didn't have a plan because I had no idea. You know, it happened so fast. It happened without notice. And so, to be honest with you, in the natural, I was just devastated. And, you know, you don't plan for something that you don't see coming. So that was part of the challenge was not knowing that it was coming, not knowing that it was going to happen. And so, um, to be honest, like I said, I didn't have a plan. I didn't know what the next step was going to be. None of that. And so wow. I, I think 
before it wasn't until like i said i was listening to the radio show and my brother who is my pastor and my mentor as well art cartwright i thank god he was on the radio and he was talking to his listeners and he was just encouraging he was so inspirational so powerful and he was like you know what he said you know that that book that's inside of you he was like that invention that's inside of you he said those recipes that were handed down to you from your mother your grandmother uh he said those concoctions you've been mixing in your kitchen he said that's a business that you're sitting on and he said and god didn't give you that for you to sit on it he gave it to you so you could share it with the world and that was my like aha moment that's when the plan started coming into place because it was like bing 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 bing. he's talking to me what am i what am i doing like you know what we're not gonna lay down here and just wallow in this we're gonna get back and we're gonna follow the man of god's instruction let's start a business and let's go for it right so that the plan came into play okay now what about shark tank well how did that come about you know what? It's so amazing. As soon as you decide to be obedient, you know, obedience is better than sacrifice. So as soon as, as, as I followed the instruction and I got the business up and going, and, and just by way of background, the reason the business was in place was because when my daughter was born, she had eczema. So I had no idea that that was going to turn out being the vision or open up doors or become a national beauty brand. I was really just a new mom trying to find ways to treat my daughter's eczema. And so uh, those same things that I put together to cure her eczema became the skincare line. And he announced that my the same man I got my brother Art Carver, he announced it, he said Shark Tank is coming to Detroit he said and they're looking for people to come and pitch their products and so you know remember I lost my job I lost my home lost my card and filed for bankruptcy I had nothing to lose and I said well you know what let's go for it let's go down there so I had my daughter my son come with me and we once stood in the line and Shark Tank does just like American Idol they go from city to city Chicago Nashville Atlanta they go all over the country looking for people who have products and so we're out there the long line of people and people are dressed up and I mean it's just the whole right. big, you know thing you. and I decided to go down and pitch to the sharks and it just so happened you know and i don't say as fate would have it i say as faith would have it the lead person on the team for shark tank also suffered from eczema mm, mm, mm. look at that so my daughter they're commiserate they're like you know and my daughter of course she's there with me and there's this great big aluminum my product is body scrubs and if you don't have water it's really hard to use it so i'm like lord i don't know how we're gonna get the real effect of it without this uh sink being in the room or having some access to water well we get in this great big room and guess what it's a great big sink right in the corner behind me <laughs> so we get, we get the person who's leading the team we're like you know what here can, would you like the sample can you come in can we just let you try it and while he's trying and my daughter is just the talking and she's like you know when you have eczema you have to be so careful of what you use on your skin and he is just agreeing and she's like some things have harsh chemicals and they can burn and irritate and he's like yes they do and she's like but this doesn't irritate or burn at all he's like nope it does he said and it really makes your skin feel so good he was like yes it does because like, <laughs> you, know you know she knows she, she knows what, what it is like to suffer from eczema right. and being a eczema sufferer she knew you know what things would really matter to him and by the time we got done they were like oh you are going to the next level the whole nine yards what? so i ended up like, yes getting a yes from shark tank just like that all right then. wow <laughs> okay okay now tiffany so now we done did that you done did that now walmart how did that come about you know what? Same thing. I'm telling you, my brother is so awesome and amazing. His name is Eric Hart. He said, listen, you all, he said, Walmart is looking for products that are made in America. And you get to go down, you go down to Bentonville, Arkansas, and you talk to the buyers down there, and you can pitch your product to Walmart. Now, again, I'm, I'm, I'm out here because I don't have anything to lose, and it's an opportunity to be with the world's largest retailer. And see, this was so important to me because I'm going to tell you something. Walmart was the only place where I could shop when I was walking around. I was suffering in the silence. Nobody knew what I was going through. Exactly. I had nothing bridge card in my pocket and I had to sit and pull items out of my shopping cart because I was broke as a joke and I had to sit there with tears in my eyes and decide between what I wanted to eat and what I needed to eat. Mm. Okay, it was that and during those same times, though, I would walk with my jar of product and I would have tears in my eyes and I would go to the cosmetic aisle and I would take everybody else's stuff and move it over. And I would put my jar on that shelf. And it was only me and God from my lips to God's ears. And I would cry out to God like, Lord, I know you didn't bring me this far to leave me. Lord, I ask that you please turn my life around. Lord, we got to do something. This God, there's got to be a better way. Lord, I know there's a better life. I know you got a calling for me. Lord, I know this cannot be your will. We cannot end like this. It was that same Walmart. So when he said the opportunity was there, I'm like, this is the world's largest retailer. I'm going to go ahead and go for it. Get in a hoopty, okay? I've never been to Arkansas a day in my life, okay? Never been to Arkansas, let alone Bentonville, Arkansas. Didn't mm. know where it was. 
But nevertheless, I got in a hoopty with my mother and my son, and we drove from Detroit, Michigan, all the way down to Bentonville, Arkansas. And when I tell you I was down there, you could look in my eyes and say, I was like, I ain't leaving without a deal. Y'all got to throw me out, call security, whatever you got to do. But somebody was going to give me a deal down here at Walmart. Wow. And I just... God, by the time I was through, it, somebody took a picture of me. I got my arms up like I'm preaching a sermon down there. And the Bible, like the man said, listen, he said, I know how to say no. Okay. He said, I'm not telling you no. He said, first guy, he said, I'm telling you maybe. And I'm still talking. He had to walk away and leave me in the tent. Okay. <laughs> so when you're hungry, when, you, when you're hungry, I'm telling you, you do some things. Okay. And I'm a firm believer that you do what you have to do till you can do what you want to do. So I was down there doing what I have to do. I didn't have any shame. You know what I'm saying? I was like, I don't care, whatever, walk away, but somebody going to give me a deal. And I kept talking and he said maybe and I was like, you know what? A maybe is good, but a yes is better. Let me go find another buyer to talk to. Why? I kept around going around until somebody finally told me yes mm. 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 at Walmart and put me on the Walmart shelves. Can you talk about a hallelujah moment? Oh my goodness. It's wow. just amazing. That's amazing. It's just amazing. God is so good. You know what, uh, uh Tiffany, check this out. I had a guy on my show. He uh he's a barber. And he got one, he went to take a chance to get a barbershop, a black barbershop in Walmart, and it worked for him. And the only guy to do it, yep, he, he's on, I got to send you that interview. He's one of the guys that got a, a, a barbershop in Walmart. Wow, look at God. That is so awesome and amazing. So you know what I'm saying? You know, what they say, nothing beats a failure but a try. And and people, you got to understand that you really do fail your way to success. It doesn't matter how many no's you get. All you need is that one yes. And so you have to be diligent. You have to be persistent. And you have to be thick-skinned. And you can't be easily offended. Because I'm going to tell you something. When I was down at the Walmart buyer, man, that one of them buyers, she, I felt like everything I said, she had a, a something for it. I like, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm, Lord Jesus, I'm talking, doing my little presentation. She was stopping on everyone. I mean, refuting. I was like, okay, you know what? And and but my, I thank God for what we get at Global Empowerment because it was like it's that's just feedback, and you take it all in stride, no matter what they say. If they tell you they don't like something, don't go cussing them out. Don't start finger pointing and neck rolling and all of that. Don't start rolling your eyes at them. No, if they say they don't like something, you say, oh, okay, Amy. You say, well, you know what? Would you like? There you, you know, go. Asking, just ask him, what would you like? Don't get mad. Well, do you know how much I pay for that logo? What you mean you don't like my jars? What do you mean you don't like my product? What's wrong with my product? How you going to tell me my food ain't good? What you mean my food ain't good? You can't be doing all that. That's right. That's right. You have to help yourself. That's right. Because this is the decision maker. And so we cannot let that, that haughtiness step in and make us get offended. No, you can't do that. You have to roll with it. And like he said, you say, oh, okay, that's fine. So well, tell me this. What do you like? If they tell you that your stuff is too sweet, then put a little less sugar in it. If they tell you they don't like the color, they don't like red, make it blue. They don't like blue, make it green. They don't like green, make it orange. You see what I'm saying? Exactly. You exactly. And you <laughs> across that table from a Walmart. Listen, the customer is always right. And this is what the man of God says. And he's right. Listen, when you're sitting across the table from Walmart, then Walmart is your customer. And the customer is always right. And whatever they say, that's, that is what it is. So mm -hmm. if that's your customer, then you accommodate and you make whatever changes you need to make. I'm going to tell you something. What, what's on the shelf at now, what you're seeing on the shelf right now, the glam body scrubs, that is nothing that looked like when I went down to Walmart. And if you look at old pictures, you can see it's a totally different product. It's a totally different packaging and everything because the buyer didn't like that. that it was a different vibe. And I had to go and fix my stuff to comport with what Walmart wanted. And I was right. willing to do that. And we talk about the world's largest retailer. So it boils down to how bad do you want? It? How bad do you want it? And you know, that's and, and right. And you know what, Tiffany, you know, the story of the guy who made Formula 409. No. It took him 409 times to make it. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I didn't know that. But then you wow. know. You know what? I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. Any success story you see. And, you know, and that's why I thank God I'm going to tell you for opportunities like this to share my story. Because one thing's always I say, you know what? They see us in our glory. But do you know my story? You that's see what right. I'm saying? That's because right. Often think that you out there the first time around going getting a deal from Walmart. Listen, listen. No, 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 no. That jar that you see them glam body scrubs that on the store shelves, that is not what it looked like. I got pictures of my jars when I first started. It was a white plastic jar with a with a green dot on top of it. Okay, and that was the label. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and you know what, Tiffany? This is a prime example. <laughs> this is a prime example too, Tiffany. How many times have I asked you to get on the show? <laughs> 
<laughs> Come on now. <laughs> diligent you've been diligent you've been diligent because we be on facebook FaceTime. you like look come on listen can we do it not look i was like we gonna get there we gonna get there but you got it because because the thing is that people want to say yes i'm a firm believer in that people want to say yes they want to make the accommodation it'll be the right time yes. So sometimes, like I tell, I try to help anybody I can. And sometimes people on social media, like I want, I got a product. They all over the country. And will you help me? I'll be like, yes, I will. And I had one person they got kind of upset because I don't charge anybody anything because my brother didn't charge any of us. He teaches us all this information about getting shelf ready products for free. And because he gave it to us for free, I don't charge people. I try to help as many as I can. And one person got all it was got kind of bent out of shape with me or whatever. I was like, wait, first of all, I'm like, if you're on my page and you know how busy I'm, so you charge it to my heart. I mean, to my head, not my heart, because you know if I said I'm gonna help you help you but i'm talking about helping you for free i ain't charge you nothing so you be have a little grace you know what i'm saying have a little grace you know what i mean yes ma'am i don't charge for what i do because i want to help people and i want to bless people but i just ask people be a little bit patient i may i may not be able to pick up the phone i may have to text you, you may have to take a text message or something like that but eventually we're gonna get to it because i'm a person of my word it's just a matter of working with me and being patient every day i have is a, is a 20 hour day 20 to 24 hour day every day you know so it. sometimes don't happen as fast as we want them to but if i say i'm gonna do something the best believe it's gonna happen yes like ma'am yes ma'am i already know i appreciate your diligence because i'm a person on my word but i have been just this past week i don't know if you saw it i did i went to my alma mater and did the high school graduation on yesterday hall of last week i was in atlanta we just bought 157 women into my sorority that just joined out the cap alpha sorority yes ma'am so i've been my, my sister law was one of the pledges or whatever. So I pin. I mean, it's just been busy, 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 busy. And then we're going to uh, uh, we're going to New Orleans on the way to Las Vegas and on the way to Washington D.C. That's all coming up in the in the next coming week. So busy is an understatement, but I thank God for every day of it. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, Tiffany. Now what I want to do is I want to ask you: Do you have any advice for somebody who happened to be in the same shoes as you was? If something just happened and everything is gone, and the next day or whatever and they might be distraught what kind of advice would you give them you know what i would tell them first and foremost to continue to trust god right it word says we are to trust the lord with all of our heart and lean not on your own understanding see that's when you get jammed up when you start leaning on your own understanding and saying why me why me what was me what was me you have to remember not just who you are but who you are and so when you know that you serve the true living God and he said he will never leave you nor forsake you, then you know. And, and I tell people, I told this to the kids the other day, I said, weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. So the key is to be determined and just understand, like my brother says all the time, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. It's how you finish. The things that we go through, this is temporary. It may not seem like, like if you had told me that when I was going through it and they was repossessing my car over my ex-husband's house. Oh, Jesus. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you talk about like, so working out for my foreclosure, man, I done lost a home, lost the car, had to file for bankruptcy. And then not only had to go on welfare, but had a nasty welfare worker. She was mean as all get up. Boy. Wow. Yeah, you talk about but anyway, but see, but you got to know, listen, this is all temporary. It's going to turn around. This too it's shall, hey, what they say, this too shall pass. And see, I tell people all the time, if you can see the blessings on the other side of that storm, then you would weather that storm because the blessing is just on the other side of it. The victory is just on the other side of it. I look back and what if I had never gone down to Shark Tank or what if I never gone over and, and, and pitched to Walmart? No, we wouldn't be having this conversation right now. And so sometimes you have to go through things to get you where God is trying to take. You. you better believe it. You better believe it. All right, Miss yep. Tiffany. Now, what I want to know is, do you got any shout outs for anybody? Oh, my gosh. Absolutely. Well, first of all, giving honor to God, who is truly the head of my life, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I give all glory, honor, and praise because I know it is only because of God that I am where I am today. And without him, I am nothing. But through him, I am everything. So I thank God for him. I thank God for my brother, my mentor, my pastor, my best friend, the man of God, the founder of Global Empowerment Ministries, Art Cartwright. Because if it wasn't for him and the anointing of his life and him teaching us about entrepreneurship and how to be business owners and sharing the, the sun success stories where we study millionaires and billionaires again i would not know anything about any of this and i wouldn't be having this conversation with you today so i thank god for him as well just being a man of god and being obedient to the calling of god on his life and then i tell you i have a mother like no other alita cartwright i hope she gets this broadcast when i tell you you talk about the wind beneath your wings your biggest supporter your cheerleader the person that's your real and i don't say ride or die i say ride and live 
that would be my mama. I mean, just just always so supportive and just pouring in and always believing, always supporting, always having faith and just raising us in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. So I just thank God for her because, I mean, everything I've done, every pop-up event, every time driving down to Bentonville, Arkansas, she's right there. I got to fly to Vegas for the world's largest cosmetic trade show. Mama's flying with me, okay? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. she yes, just all... She is. Anybody would tell you. They say, if they see me as something, they'd be like, where mama? Where mama is? Where's mama? Because she's so supportive. And she doesn't just support it. My mama loves everybody, okay? I don't care. You could be a stranger on the street, and my mama will open up her hand and be a blessing to you. I mean, she just gives, gives, and gives. Everybody calls her mama car right and call her because she blesses everybody without question. I mean, family members, she has helped everybody. She's that person that everybody can go to and everybody can count on, and she's going to show them love. She's that person that's going to help you, not just cheer you on, but help you get to where you need to be so um i just i thank god for her as well i really do um and and, and everybody i mean i guess i have a wonderful supportive family everybody my family and my global empowerment family has been absolutely awesome and amazing they have supported me throughout this entire journey through all the ups and downs and everything they have just i mean been there to volunteer to support so i'm just thankful i mean there's just blessings coming and going all around yes ma'am yes ma'am and again miss tiffany i really appreciate it. i know like you said it took a minute but like I say, if you persistent and you uh, keep on inboxing and inboxing and say, Miss Tiffany, I need you on my show. When I seen your story, I had to get you on the show. And look at here. We right here today. Oh, amen. Amen. Well, no, I'm honored. I, I thank you for having me on because, like I said, I thank God for every opportunity to inspire other people, to encourage other people, to motivate other people, and to let them know that in the same way that God brought me out and delivered me, he'll bring you out the same way. So I just, I thank God for it. He gave me a testimony, and I'm I'm compelled to share it with the whole wide world. Yes, ma'am. And, you know, last time I was in Detroit, I got relatives in Flint, but I'm a big Pittsburgh Steelers fan, and the last time I was in in, in Detroit was when Pittsburgh won that Super Bowl. I was there. Oh, my goodness. Wow. That's been a minute. We haven't seen them days. In fact, man, you know, Matthew Stafford, he going to leave. He didn't left the line. And got him a, bo- got him a Super Bowl ring. <laughs> but you know what? You know what? I don't throw shade. Ain't no haters up in here. That's what yeah, I'm telling you. I already know. Yep. I am happy for him. I really am. I'm I'm happy for him because, you know, I know what it's like to have the realization of a dream. And that's, you know, he was able to go down there and make it happen. So I'm happy for him. And y'all I'm had happy. the best running back, though, out of the, I can't even believe he didn't even get no ring. But Barry Sanders was one of the best running backs in the business. You know, he was. And to be honest with you, I wish Barry had did like Matt. I mean, you know, but he was, and I, that's what I love about Barry. He was so committed and so loyal the whole time. You know what I'm saying? Because he could have jumped. And, you know, people get mad when, like with LeBron James. Everybody gets so yeah, mad with people. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do. You got to do because this is your career. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This is your career. I can see. So I'm like, we got to quit hating on people if they decide to do what's in their best interest and move on somewhere else. You know what I'm saying? That's right. You, you know, Jerome you know? Battis is from your home, from the Detroit, oh, so too. I know. You know. I know everybody's up in here the, from the D. The okay. bus, that's yeah, from the D, huh? Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's all right. That's all right. They say he trying to help black businesses, so I'm trying to find out who's connected to him. So he well, well, you know, I got his mom. You know, I, I they've been on the radio show. So I interviewed a still a, yeah, I interviewed still a players, too, uh, Miss Cor, right? <laughs> Oh, listen, I, I need you to call his mom and get in touch with him and tell him you got a sister from Detroit that's trying to change things. Listen, we're here in the city of Detroit where we lead the nation in poverty, unemployment, incarceration, and recidivism. And we have the least number of entrepreneurs. And here in Detroit, we are trying to bring change. And make okay, then we're going to make it happen. We're going to make it happen. Come back and show some love because, listen, I have women who are returning citizens, women who've been victims of domestic violence and human trafficking, and they are ready, willing, and able to come to work, to get to work. They're excited about it, and I want to give them jobs, and not just jobs because I'm a firm believer, give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day, but give that sister, teach her how to fish, and she will be able to feed her family and her legacy for the rest of her life and the lives that are going to come behind her. So that's what I'm trying to do here in Detroit. Mm-hmm. And so I, that's why people have been telling me to connect with him okay. because they're like, of okay. that story help you get to what you need to do to help the women you know what i mean so so that's what i'm all about there has to be a why that's what we to learn at global empowerment this is not about making money it's we're out here trying to make history you know what i'm saying that's what's up and, trying to be a blessing that's what entrepreneurship is really all about and i want your listeners to understand that this is not a money grab you know what i'm saying right this is not a 
Okay. It's about what tears are you going to stop? And he asks us that all the time. What tears will you stop with the money that you make from your business? Who are you going to bless? Who are you going to help? Because if it's all about me, my four no more, and the twos and fuse, you can miss me with all of that, okay? That's what I'm Seriously. talking about. And you know Seriously. what, too, though? I'm a diehard Cadillac fan, too, so you know where they come from, right? <laughs> uh, see, there, that's all right here in the D, okay? Huh? Man. Yes, ma'am. Ma Mm-hmm, that know it. But see, the thing is this, we want to empower some more people so that not only do we sit there and, and work for Cadillac, but why don't we have our own Cadillac? There you go. That's right. Why can't we why look at TV if you can be TV? Hey, there you go. That's what I'm talking about, okay? You see what that's, I'm saying? That's right. That's right. That's, that's why we're right. here. All right, That's Tiffany, I know we done went longer than you wanted to. I I'm mean, not, I didn't, no, I'm, listen, listen, uh -uh, I'm good. You ask me anything you want to. I'm on your time, and, and this is your show, and I, and I want, like I said, anything that I have to pour out, I believe that when you go, don't leave nothing on the table, okay? Yes, ma'am. Well, you know what? I think we're going to cover about everything. I really appreciate it. And uh, yes. again, it's an honor to have you on my show, and I got one more question to ask you. Yes. Could you please tell everybody around the world in Michigan what's the baddest station in the land and the station that pays? All right. That would be the MC Reggie Fresh Morning Show. <laughs> <laughs> and there y'all have it, folks. That's Miss Tiffany Nicole Courtright. She was right here on the MC Reggie Fresh Morning Show. This is the MC Reggie Fresh Morning Show. A station that pays.